stage. Everyone give it up for Gareth David Lloyd. Has anyone seen Kyo in or Lou Ferrigno? Because uh, last time I saw uh, Kai, he was hot on the heels of Lou Ferrigno. Um, uh, yeah, we've got we to keep an eye out for him. He's running he's, around somewhere. He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be <laughs> here, but uh, I'm sure he'll join us at some point. Yes, but yeah, we will carry on because we have lots to talk about. It's great to have you here. I know that a lot of the fans here will know you from Torchwood as the Anto. He is one of the most loved, I guess, characters on the show. Can you describe him for those who might not know about him? Uh, he is um, dependable, um, loyal, except for the times that he's hiding a, a cyber girlfriend in the basement. Just at those times, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's, um, he, he's, he's a great uh, archivist, he's, uh, he's, and he's perfect at making uh, real cups of coffee. Coffee, not tea. No, they call him a tea boy, but yeah. coffee's his speciality. Yeah. What about you, tea or coffee? I'm, I'm, I drink coffee, yeah, black coffee. <laughs> oh, see, I feel good. So he really should be coffee boy. Should, should have been coffee yeah. boy, but yeah. It was, but it was a British stuff. thing, tea boy, yeah. Had to stick. <laughs> and um, I have to say, I, well, last year went to Yanto Shrine, and it's certainly something to behold. I was probably there. I'm there every day, so. Are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like taking the tickets and uh, no, I, I'm standing there, with, there for I, the photos? I, I, I'm there with, with, with a, a small metal bowl asking for change um, yeah. because <laughs> Doctor Who Experience put, put the Yanto Shrine on the tour without even asking me or cut, cutting me in for any commission. Uh, wow. So now I just sort of sit there hoping that somebody will notice me and toss me some money. So you just look like the ghost of Yanto. Just with the, a little I never ball. get recognised there. Every, no. every, everyone's so invested uh, in the fact that Yanto died from an alien fart in season three <laughs> that um, they, they, don't, they don't think that you know I, I'd be there. In yeah. their minds, he's, he, he's gone. So I'm there desperately trying to get noticed, wearing the suit and everything, and I just get blanked. You're standing by your picture of yeah, the Anto, yeah, and they yeah. just don't see That's you. It, you yeah. just look like another cosplayer to them. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, I have to say, because Yanto, I mean, he is very sort of recognizable in, in the Doctor Who universe. And I think that when people, when he first came on, he maybe wasn't so much, but he definitely grew in the minds and in the storylines of Torchwood. So how do you think that, how did you see that sort of transition for him? Um, uh, it happened really organically, actually. I mean, um, Yanta was uh, one of those characters that I describe as uh, the, the guy in the red shirt in Star Trek that was supposed to sort of, people are supposed to see him and know sort he's there. Sort blend but into he, the background. But he, he's going to die pretty soon. He's going <laughs> to have a couple of lines and nobody's going to get too emotionally invested. Um, I, I was supposed to die in every season, I think, and they, they changed it. Oh, here he is. Hey, look who we have, everyone. Kyle Owen, say hi. Sorry, everybody, for being late. I've just been massaging the Hulk. <laughs> I told them I told them you were uh, uh, <laughs> chasing Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, big star. It's not, um, not good for your health, really. No, no, I know. No. I've, I've just arm wrestled him. And have a guess who won? Him. They said him. Him, yeah. He, surely he did. No, I did, because I uh, slipped a couple of raw hypnols in his uh, room temperature water. <laughs> What did you say to him in the end? I said, Lou, arm wrestle now, bitch. And he went, no problem. Bang. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> That's Bam definitely chill. a memorable Sorry one. for being late, guys. Um, yeah, I was in the middle of answering a question. So if, right. um, rude. Just rude. Rude, rude. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite an, it was an organic thing that happened gradually. Um, I, I think they, they enjoyed, the producers enjoyed the, the chemistry that was building between uh, Captain Jack and Yanto's character and they, uh, they capitalized on that really um yeah so I, I, it wasn't something that was planned I, th I think i was supposed to go quite quickly so mm -hmm. when people ask how did it feel uh, to know you were gonna you know kick the bucket in season three how did it feel and i i, I felt lucky to, to have gotten that far really yeah um yeah it wasn't a big sort of um <laughs> it wasn't a big surprise <laughs> put it that way no but it was a good death or a bad death for you would well you i would have liked to have gone Am I, am I pointing this in the wrong way? Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have gone down in a hail of bullets uh -huh. or, or yeah, a yeah. big explosion. Like or a platoon. Yeah, yeah, like a yeah. platoon, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. um, Torchwood does platoon. Yeah. No, but <laughs> alien fart was what they went for in the end. Um, and 
you know, I, I got to do d- 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 death in death in your lover's arms, which is always a, g- a good death scene. Yeah. But you know, kind of Shakespearean. Yeah, yeah. But mm. doing something action packed just prior to that would would have been nice. But never mind. You, you can't win them all. Mind. Well, I was interested to learn that actually both you guys, um, so obviously growing up, starting off in Wales, then went on to do quite a bit of Shakespeare. Is that a bit of a challenge for you guys? I I, I did Shakespeare before Torchwood. I haven't done any since. I've, I've yeah. done theatre. I've, I've done a couple of um, American classics. Uh, I've been lucky enough to do that. I did I did a load of Shakespeare with my uh, with dr- drama school and um, and whatnot before. But you, did yeah, I did Shakespeare before Torchwood as well, and I've done a couple after. My first ever professional job actually was um, uh, uh, The Tempest, and uh, and then I've done Richard the Third prior to Torchwood, and then after Torchwood, I've uh, I've done As You Like It and Twelfth Night. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's great fun. I mean, yeah. it's hard work. You know what I mean? He's, he's obviously one of the greatest ever living writers, isn't he? Arguably. I mean, uh, his work is superb. So an actor... And the most performed. And so the most performed. So an actor to, for, for an actor to do Shakespeare is, uh, I think it's always a challenge and also a bit of a pleasure to do as well. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, it's... Uh, if you have the right director to guide you along the way, you need a very intelligent director, I think, who understands it. Because I struggle with it. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a, if you've got a director who understands it, it's a lot easier. But um, yeah, it, it, but, 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 but when you get it, they're always a joy. Did you do it with a Welsh accent, or did you do the whole British period drama sort of thing? I, I I was lucky enough to work with a director who didn't really care about accents, mm-hmm. because there would have been Welsh, Irish, Scottish accents, a, a mixture of accents. Back in Shakespeare's day in the 1600s when he was performing at his Globe Theatre, they would have had accents from all over the place. And I really don't... And, and I don't think Shakespeare would have gone, no, you can't do that, love. Uh, you need to come from Liverpool. You need to come from here. <laughs> I think... Because the language is so rich. Um, and it's, it's, it's internal, isn't it? The, yeah. The language yeah, is an yeah, internal yeah. monologue, so it's not necessarily... So you um, don't really worry about what you... You know, I mean, you, you have to have good enunciation and, you know, diction... Um, but I think, you know, Malvolio has to come from Scotland or Hamlet has to come from here. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think Shakespeare ever, ever specified. And I think when you hear a rich voice, somebody who interprets the language really well, it works, doesn't it? You know, you, as long as you tell the story, tell the story, that's it, basically. Absolutely. And when did you guys first get into acting? And when did you catch the acting bug? I, I, played, a, I played a robot. Um, in a school play and um, my voice was not unlike that of a Dalek um, but, but I was eight um, and I played yeah I, pl- I played like a uh, a computer called Beanstalk it was called, it was a modern day version of Jackie and the Beanstalk oh, and see. Beanstalk was actually a computer game so Beanstalk was a computer really weird but yeah that was my, that was my and I, and I just fell Love. in love with it straight away I was being a robot <laughs> I think it's yeah it, it, it was in school for me um, I think I was quite uh, loud and unruly in class at times and I think I had some wonderful teachers at my school who kind of like um, channeled my sort of energy into like going right get on stage do, and, and I never had any qualms about standing up and reading out aloud in class I just I just never ever worried about standing up and reading or doing assembly kind of thing um, it was just something that I always kind of like. Yeah, I'll do that. You like uh, the limelight? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it was, it was not even a limelight at all. It was like I, it never really bothered me to to kind of like stand up and speak in front of a crowd or or anything. So I think it was just um, it was nurtured uh, by a, a really w- a, 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 a wonderful group of teachers, I think, and um, they sort of guided me into a way of like got a got a Welsh. Um, Go to National Youth Theatre Wales. You should do this. You do that. So, unlike young amateur dramatics, like the nativity and things. So yeah, yeah. I'm grateful to my teachers, really. And I know that you sort of started off doing sort of Welsh programmes for S4C and things like that as well. So was there much difference doing like Welsh dramas compared to doing the kind of more British ones? The language is quite different. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not fluent Welsh at all, but you are, aren't you? you, you yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. The, the, the crew are the same. It's just the language is different. Mm-hmm. Nothing's different at all. Um, the, the crew, uh, the crew make the programs, obviously, and, and everything's the same. 
uh, the only thing that's different is the language. And so obviously uh, Torchwood and Doctor Who filmed in uh, Cardiff. And uh, so was it fun sort of being there with the whole Doctor Who universe? I spent five years in London because I, I was told fr from Wales that I, I had to go to yeah, I, I had to go to London to forge a career in <laughs> yeah. in, in, in uh, as, as a performer, um, and my first regular job was to go back to Cardiff to do Torchwood, which is why I'm, I'm still there. I thought I'm, I'm not not, not doing that again. Now. I've done I've done five years in London, which I loved. I loved it, but um, um, I loved having uh, you know everything on your doorstep, the immediacy of of everything. But um, I've been there, done it. I'm more of a rural boy at heart, so knowing that I can actually just commute to London for auditions and live at home for, for half the price that it costs to live in London, then I just stayed home this time. Sure. And obviously the shrine's there. You gotta, you know, you need to hang out at the shrine. Well, I need to maintain it and make you sure do. everything's it's clean and laminate everything and, you know, right. sniff the knickers. And <laughs> I, I did, Sorry, was that... Yeah. Um, I don't really do that. There was that once. He but, does. Yeah. Um, the great thing is when Gareth goes to the shrine himself with a, with a hoodie and, like, there's people next to the shrine and they don't know you've missed it that he's there I've told this story already you missed it you, you, you were you, you were massaging <laughs> Lou Ferrigno's biceps well Kai do you have a shrine story yes have you I have a shrine I, I have a spare room in my house and that's the shrine I've got photos of myself all over the uh, <laughs> I also visit there every every day as well <laughs> and it's laminated everything's laminated right. it's important to have it laminated because you can just wipe it down and then afterwards clean, go yeah, wipe it clean. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> sorry 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 uh no i i love going down there cardiff bay was amazing again like Gareth, i've lived in london for 20 odd years um and i think i've only i think i've only worked in london twice in that whole period um and most of my work is in wales <laughs> or you know uh and i'm and, and very proud of cardiff and it looks great on screen as well um but i'm really glad that the shrine is still there because the Bay of Cardiff, the Cardiff Bay is gorgeous and it's a lovely place to visit. If you've not been, get down there, it's gorgeous. It sounds like a Welsh commercial now, slightly. <laughs> Cardiff. <laughs> Eleanor, um, please. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to talk about Yanto with Jack because um, obviously their relationship was a huge part of the show. So, you know, if they was, if Yanto made it, he was still alive. Where do you think they would be in their relationship now? Um, I'm not sure. P probably just bickering constantly, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose. But it'd, it'd be that sort of um, that, that sort of loving, that loving bickering where they're, they're constantly winding each other up, but they can't live without each other. Yeah. Um, for, for a TV drama, it might have got a bit monotonous after a while, so I can sort of see Russell's point of sort of, you know, destroying Jack by taking, taking Yanto away. But yeah, it, it would probably be quite a, a quite a cutesy place I'd say mm -hmm. and uh, Kai do you think Reese and Jack would have ever made up and maybe had a relationship themselves <laughs> I think no no I think uh, <laughs> I think Reese and Jack will always have a mutual admiration and I think Reese will always go he's a bloody good looking lad that Jack <laughs> um, but I don't think I can't see Reese and Jack ever having a relationship but um uh, I think I think Jack if it ever gets brought back to TV now, you know, you know Russell's going to write in a love. Uh, of course, he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There'll be some sort of like flashback dream scene sequence that Jack has had a fantasy that he's in bed with Reese, or Reese has had a fantasy. Is or or Reese is like a, like <laughs> I'm a bit confused. Um, but yeah, no, I think I think I think Reese has only got one love, and that's uh, Owen beer. <laughs> <laughs> No, he loves Gwen, but uh, yeah, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be a great story. I mean, I have kissed John Barrowman, but like not as Reese. Who hasn't? <laughs> I mean, who hasn't? I mean, who hasn't? When did you last kiss John Barrowman? Uh, in Birmingham about a month ago. <laughs> and you? Um, that would be in on some at some panel. Yeah, just to make yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Just, John always makes a point of kissing me at a panel. Just to and make, that's that's make exactly it. Handsy. You have to come on the stage. You go first. John obviously obviously comes on last. Yeah. Uh, and when he does come on stage, he makes a point of grabbing us and snogging us, basically. Yeah. Um, with with, with tongues as well. The, the, the question that most people ask, which I've actually banned from most panels, yeah. well, from all panels actually, is, is what's it like to kiss John Barrowman? I'll just set the record straight now. I was talking to my friend, 
James earlier about this, that I was actually gay before I met John Barrowman. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he put me off men for life. <laughs> now I've got two kids, two dogs, you know. Uh, and, and, I, and I get asked, you know, if, if, you know what, John, we've got any funny stories, and I go, well, no, I have kissed him. And then I go, what's it like to kiss him? And again, I think on the, line, on the same sort of lines as Gareth is, is that um, he stinks of cabbage. Stinks of cabbage. Yeah. Loads, stinks, yeah, cabbage. Stinks of cabbage. His breath is awful. 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 Yeah. And he's got a problem with it, and it's, uncu- it's incurable. Yeah. He's got, his halitosis is like... My God. It, it, it could melt it's, steel. It's, it's like a mixture of sweet corn, tomatoes, and milk. Yeah. So yeah, milk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And cabbage. It's like, it's, like, it's like six week old, baby sick, that's been left out in the desert. <laughs> with sweet corn. Yeah. That's what his breath smells like. I mean, he's a beautiful looking man. Beautiful looking man. Beautiful looking man. But his breath is like, my God, he could, yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah, he's like, he doesn't age, does he? He always looks the same. Well, you know why that is, don't you? Why is that? <laughs> why is that? Because he, because he, um, he, he, he spends a lot of money on it. Uh, uh. He spends a lot of money on it. And he drinks the blood of virgins. <laughs> he goes to Sweden twice a year for the, for a complete blood, blood transfusion, like Keith Richards. Oh, right. and, and, and he has a skin peel every... Uh, three and a half minutes. Every three and a half minutes, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, he, he also exfoliates uh-huh. uh, regularly. Well, he doesn't. He has two young boys who exfoliate him. His, from, pool, his pool boys, they exfoliate him. Yeah, yeah, there's two young lads. That they're, they're only about 14, but he bought them from Peru, and um, they're there... Um, one <laughs> so they they ex- he exfoliate they exfoliate him most mornings, and he I think he paid about four hundred quid for the pair of them. It's a good deal, <laughs> for everlasting life kind of thing. <laughs> so what is he like working with? Because he's obviously notorious for his antics on set. So what can you tell us? I'll give, I'll give a serious answer. Um, uh, he's a great patriarch. For a group, he's a great leading man. He's a, he's, a, he's a great leading cast member. He looked after everyone from everyone from from Eve, who was his number two, down to the runners, who, who he'd, if their dog got injured, he'd pay twenty grand for their back to be fixed. That happened once. Um, so he, he's, he's a he's a he's lovely, wasn't he? He looked after everyone. And when you're working sort of between twelve and fifteen hours a day, and everybody's energy is getting low, and you're you're you're, you're, in, you're filming early hours of the morning on wet streets of Car- Cardiff, and it's peeing down with rain. You need someone who, like John Barrowman, who's going to sing "I Am What I Am" dancing down the street, um, <laughs> just to lift everyone uh, everyone's spirits. So yeah, he, 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 lo- lots of jokes, lots of messing around, but um, we really needed it to sort of keep our energy up. And as, as soon as the as soon as the director said action, he, he, he was a usually a consummate professional. Usually, I can only second that. That's that that is the most serious and honest answer. Uh, Eve will describe him as a medicine. He would kind of like just pick you up um, when your energy's flagging because don't forget, you know, we did 10 month shoot and by the end of it, it would become, you'd be so knackered and, the, and, the, and, the, and also the production side of things would need to make sure that we have to wrap by the 29th of November and if you don't, I mean, that costs some thousands and thousands of pounds. So, you know, you'd, you'd have to ask the crew for extra hours and the actors for extra hours. And, and, and invariably, the crew would always say yes. And when they did say yes of a long day, John would invariably um, treat them all as they left the studio to a table full of champagne to say thanks. His, his treatment and his, um, his leadership is second to none. He, is, he, he was Captain Jack, and he definitely was our captain. He was... Superb. I can't really say anything b- bad about him. I can't fault him. He's Ex- except that his breath smells of sweet corn, tomatoes, fa- and milk and cabbage. Yeah. Apart from the fact that he sells drugs to kids, <laughs> kicks dogs in the ass, and his breath smells of shite. <laughs> but other than that, he's wonderful. <laughs> and do you guys have a favourite moment together from filming? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know. Is there are children, um, including mine? Hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> That's it, yeah. One day your daddy is going to tell you all about it. There were loads, wasn't there? There was lots of loads. Don't forget, when we we started that job, 
we were just coming into that world, that universe of like, I think Chris Eccleston had just left and Billy and David were literally taking it to another level with Russell. Yeah. It was so exciting. And then it was nearly 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. Uh, we had a ball, you know, we, we worked hard, but we, had a, we played hard and Cardiff was cool. They all give us apartments down the bay and we had an amazing time. And, and I think it'd be really hard to pick out a special memory as, as far as me and you can see, I, I liked it when we had that pretend fight in the middle of Cardiff. <laughs> on my birthday, yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was amazing, yeah, yeah. Outside, outside the Hilton in, uh, on, on uh, by, by Bahaha there, yeah, yeah. And there was, the other day, I don't know if you were on set, but um, one of the crew in, in the morning gave me this mysterious blue, blue gel to swallow, and for the whole day they couldn't shoot me from the waist down. <laughs> Do you remember that? Seriously. <laughs> but it... it <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very funny day. It was a very funny day. Blue gel? Yeah, it was a blue gel. It was, I, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was, no. uh, at the time, I was quite reckless. I, I, I'd eat anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on out of that. And then, yeah, it turned we, out to we, be the, the, the atmosphere male set, enhancement. The, the atmosphere on set was just unreal all the time. And in the first series, I didn't really get to see much of the lads and, uh, and, and, and Naoko and Eve as well uh, because I was pretty much in, just in Gwen and is flat all the time but second series onwards like it was just it was so funny and genuinely genuinely all got on and we're mates ever since you know and when, whenever there's an opportunity to meet up at comic cons like it's, it's just a joy they were the loveliest bunch of people well, speaking of Reese and the fact that he kind of gradually transitioned into being part of the Torchwood team, at what point do you, would you say that, or do you think that there was a point where he actually became part of the Torchwood team? Yeah, well, I mean, he did get to know what... He, he found out about stuff in, 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 in the episode Meet, but I never really think that Reese is part of it. I think Reese, And I'd never want to be part of it either. You know, people, would you like to be part of the Torchwood team? I wouldn't really because I just quite like Reese going in, giving Gwen a hand, because as soon as this whole nonsense is over, Gwen can come home to Reese. And, uh, I mean, he was involved in some great stuff in Children of Earth, especially, the, especially that fight we got with, with Yanto. Right, okay, Reese, we're going to need you. We're going to need you to steal the, the laptop. And he became part of that. But he didn't really, as a character, I don't think he'd really want to be there. He would much rather be home watching a game of rugby and having a couple of cans of lager. <laughs> but... Um, He's only there because of Gwen, I think. Mm. Um, and I think it suits the series much better if Reese isn't a part of it. Mm -hmm. And do you have a favorite Gwen Reese moment? Um, whenever I kissed her, um, <laughs> she's hot. And you know, and, and, you know and I, and I used to get paid to kiss her. Right. Um, I, think, I think. Terrible stubble, though. Ter 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 yeah. Awful stubble. <laughs> She'd never shave of a morning. She'd never shave. Her five o'clock shadow was awful. Um, uh, yeah, some, some, lovely, some lovely scenes with her. Um, I like the stuff with the shapeshifter in the wedding episode. We, that was funny. We, I love shooting that episode. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we, had a, we were out on location doing that. All of that episode was really good. Really good fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. When we were trying... When we were, when I think we were at the altar doing the vows and they had, like, John... Gaz, Burn, and Naoka watching us do it. It was a bit, you know, hard, hard, it was hard work, but fun to do. We were all, it was just a really good laugh. Awesome. And um, I have to ask, when, obviously when playing Yanto, were you surprised that he made such a lasting impression on the fans? Not really. <laughs> no. No, I, I, was, I knew there was going to be a, um, a bit of a backlash mm -hmm. um, because I, I knew by that stage, I knew how, um, how loved the character was um, and, and how special he was to, to, a, to a lot of different people. I, I was not expecting a shrine to be erected or um, uh, tons of coffee to be sent to the BBC. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was quite weird, but also very flattering to think that I'd been part of the creation of a character that, that meant so much to so many people. Yeah. And um, obviously you mentioned about um, working with John Barron earlier, but you guys have actually Ooh. worked... <laughs> Who is that guy? Um, but you guys have actually worked um, on the same show before, I believe, as well. You both worked on Waterloo Road. 
Yeah. yeah. Not the same time. Not the same no, time. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was in the last three, last three ever episodes. Uh-huh. They, they had decided they were the last three episodes before I was in it, by the way. So don't, <laughs> don't make any conclusions. Um, yeah, I did. I did I wanted, yeah, I did a week on it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, to me, that would be my nightmare, so having to teach uh, teenage kids. What, which, how do you think you'd fare? Oh, I'd, terrible, terrible. <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd be, oh, I'd be yeah, kicked yeah. out. Yeah. I'd be kicked I, played, I, played a rugby, I played a rugby coach on it, uh-huh. and I think, um, I think he stormed out after two scenes going, I'm not having this, because they were too <laughs> gobby. I think that was the story, I think. Yeah, I, I'd, if I was... If I was a, 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 Teenagers, I'd, I'd hit one. I'd, I'd hit one. I'd have yeah, yeah. I'd end up being in jail because I'd, I'd probably like, uh, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd end up maiming them. I, I'd, I'd hit the teenagers that were like me when I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah exactly. Of course, of course. I, I remember saying to my um, my my maths teacher, and he, he nearly lost it. He, like the the, the 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 you know the the thick skin teachers have to wear that they have to be you know have to have to. You broke it. You broke it. I nearly broke him. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he said something like, and um, we were having a little. Uh, Back and forth, and he said, um, <laughs> "Don't get me going, Gareth. When I get started, I keep going all day." And I was like, "Just like your mother, sir." <laughs> <laughs> and he, he came down to me. He said, "Gareth, I just want to let you know now. If I ever see you in the street outside of school, I'm gonna smash your face." <laughs> 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 to my face, I was only about, I was only about fifteen. Wow. Yeah. But I'd probably, you know, that, that I'd, I'd have the same reaction. Because that's interesting, because um, you, Kai, actually play a paedophile in Hollyoaks, don't you? Is that true? No. <laughs> Pete's a lovely man. <laughs> He's absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, Pete is not a very nice man. A groomer. He's a, there he is. Look at him, he's thinking of grooming right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I uh, yeah, Pete. He's not a very nice man. Um, and Hollyoaks, whatever you think of Hollyoaks, they tackle these issues because their demographic um, is so important to them. And, they, and every year, the Hollyoaks will raise awareness about issues that are a bit taboo mm-hmm. and a bit like, and they'll reach out to people and people who watch it. And yeah, it was a big sexual abuse storyline. And I went in as Pete's... Um, the, 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 the sort of like stepdad to the McQueen girls. Um, and it was a big, big storyline and it showed the whole process of grooming to the abuse, to the contact, to kind of like um, denial and then like arrest, the questioning and then the sentencing, which is the way these men should be because Pete didn't have like a, a proper soap opera ending like he didn't get blown up in a car he got treated and dealt with in the exact way that these men like pete should be dealt with um i loved holly oaks uh it was my favorite job today i loved it and, and uh, i was very proud to be part of the storyline horrible horrible character horrible. pedo pete as i'm known <laughs> really? but um wow but, oh no uh, you don't get that on the street do you n- <laughs> no, oh not, look it's pedo pete not yeah well about it yeah but but it's uh Oh, there are a lot today, actually. Loads today. Really? Yeah, yeah, loads today, yeah, yeah. So do you actually, like, walk down the street and people are scared of you? No, 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 no. I, I put the knife away years ago. Um, <laughs> no, they'd be, they'd be, the, 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 it wasn't a problem at all. It was fine. Because I think people understand this, the storyline. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose to be part of that, we're raising awareness. Yeah, is yeah, a good thing. it was fine. So I never, you know, yeah. if anybody did shout at me, you know, I'd just, like... You know, I, I just brush it off. And you actually were Fuck in... Fuck off, you <laughs> fa- Fuck you, you... F- Come on in! <laughs> Fucking... That's how he brushes it off. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right, sir. <laughs> and you were in Warehouse 13, and actually when you're um, in that show, um, fans are wondering, because essentially you're in a Victorian era, what seems to be like a Victorian era to- torchwood, was that kind of what it was supposed to be? I think I, I was just offered that role, so I think that's what was in the producers' minds. They wanted sort of uh, a, a number two to a, a sexy, vivacious um, uh, H.G. Wells, played brilliantly by Jamie Murray, and they, they wanted that similar type of chemistry, that sort of back and forth that um, Yanto and Jack had. And they, it, the, the, uh, the spin-off series, Warehouse 12, was actually, um, they were all ready to go with it, and mm-hmm. uh, me and Jamie were going to, be the, the main characters in it. Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. Um, and 
and then I think I think it was Jamie that got that got defiance and then t turned turned it down. So then it just sort of went into went into the abyss, which I was gutted about because it would have been a lovely yeah. a lovely stint shooting in Canada. But um, yeah, I, th I think that's what was. What was it shooting? What did you shoot in Canada? Yeah, yeah, shot in Toronto. Oh, yeah. love. Um, but that was what what was in the producers' minds, I think, when I got offered the part. Well, maybe it will come back. You never know. Maybe, maybe. So I want to give you guys the opportunity to ask a couple of questions. If you guys want to stick your hands up for me and I'll come around to you. But firstly, I just need to ask you, obviously the 13th Doctor Who has just been announced. 13th Doctor, I should say. Woo! <laughs> no ideas. <laughs> should, what have, do you should have been think? me. <laughs> and, um, and obviously with that, Chris Chibnall is now taking over as a show runner. So what do you think of the new direction? Um, I think it's great. I, I think it's a long time coming, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not, not surprised. It wasn't a shock to me, especially with all references to it being possible for, for the Doctor or the Master to be a woman in earlier series. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's great, and, uh, and it has happened, um, you know, um, a lot, a lot, long, a lot longer after it should have happened. Um, but what I am. <laughs> What I am really enjoying is, is the backlash of the people who, who don't agree with it. I mean, uh, the, 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 the people who are saying the doctor can't be a woman. I think it's, I think it's really, really silly. How, how can, how can, how can um, the, the doctor's sex make you so insecure? Um, notably, it's a lot of middle-aged um, middle men that are, have got the half. Um, uh, so it's been great for me because I've had lots of entertainment on Twitter and, and, and social media with, with, with all these idiots um, who, who are uh, causing a sort of outcry um, at the thought of the doctor being a woman. Are there any particular... I think it's a disgrace. <laughs> I think it's an utter shaman. <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous as well, Jodie Whittaker. I think it's wonderful. Um, at no point ever does it specify that the doctor has to be male or female, and quite rightly so. Chris Chibnall is a very talented man. She's a very talented girl, and I think it's the best thing ever. I think I can't wait to see her. Um, and why bloody not? The Doctor can be anything and anyone they want. Like Hannah said, the Doctor's an alien, so they can be whatever they want. And I think she's going to carry the show into another level. And I think, and for me, for one, I'll start watching it again, because I haven't watched it the past few years, because I think Stephen Moffat's a pain in the ass. Woo! He here. <laughs> So you know he's a bit, he's a rude, he's miserable. Um, he was rude to me a few times. Rude to me a few times. Uh, so um, I can't wait. Keep Capaldi, stunning actor, and Pearl, outstanding. But as far as the writer goes, got no time for him whatsoever. And long live Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker all the way. Woo -hoo! I think it deserves a round of applause, don't you? All right, so if you guys put your hands up for me. Can I ask What would you like to ask? Where did you get that dress? <laughs> I don't know, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, my name's Naomi. I'm one of the biggest fans of Torchwood. Can't and hear a thing. Who. Can't hear a thing. <laughs> um, what is your favourite line out of all of the Torchwoods? Your favourite line. Mine was my... Mine was the... Um, the sarcasm when Owen asked, uh, it was about the phones, um, land, mobiles, landlines, tin cans with bits of string, and he's trying to reiterate the fact that the phones aren't working, and he goes on this elaborate, sarcastic um, monologue about how it is, <laughs> how he said a hundred times the phones aren't working. Do you remember it? Well, it is. Oh, mobiles, landlines, tin cans with bits of strings, phones not working, phones all broken. Hello, anybody there? No, because the phones aren't working. <laughs> it was a bit longer than that, but it was, yeah, that's, that's one that I, I needed to do a few times because I thought it was really, really brilliant. I think probably um, it was when Reese and Gwen were arguing and he found out uh, about Tortured in, uh, in the episode meet and Reese said, Aliens! In Cardiff. Um, as someone who takes prop design, like the amount of like the range in props in the show is amazing, especially like in countryside with like the dead bodies, like the, the tongues, 
You, you didn't see the rest of it. They had to cut out a lot of it because it was too, it was too gross for... They had, like, um, in, in, the, in the cell that me and Tosh were, they had human feces in there, like, what, not fake, fake human feces in, in the corner, and, and there were tongue sandwiches and things like that lying around, and it was, it was just horrible, so you didn't get to see all of it. But, yes, sorry, carry on. Well, my question just was, what's your favourite prop that was on set? Um, anything that John Barrowman hasn't handled. Namely because there was this one. Remember the Dokken Eye? The Dokken Eye? No, do you remember that from um, uh, Random Shoes? Um, yeah. Uh, that prop went missing one morning. Um, and then John, John whilst, well, it didn't go missing. John, John had just nicked it off the table. Nobody had noticed. Uh, and, and John sort of walks in. <laughs> hey, everybody. Do you know what's happened? The Dokken Eye's gone missing. How are we going to shoot today's film? Today's scenes, it's gone missing. We can't find it anywhere. You know when he puts on that high camp voice that he's up to something, that he's, he's, he's uh... So then uh, he bends over and said, is it under here? And uh, he bends over right by Eve Miles, and he's got his pants down. And lo and behold, the Dokken Eye is there, wedged between both buttocks. And it was like a doll's eye, so if you moved it around, it was like spin, it would move. So he started wiggling around. So there was this new, a very new type of alien looking at Eve straight in the face. Um, yeah, and like four or five people had to handle that prop that day. None of them knew. Luckily, I, luck, luckily I didn't have to do that. It's better they didn't know, I think. Pardon? It's better they didn't know. Maybe. It's better they didn't know, yeah. It's better they didn't know. Fantastic. I think my favourite prop was the Doak and I, because I had to... Swallow it one after the after the. Uh... You had to swallow the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Great question. I can't. Uh -huh. top, I can't top that. I think um, there were some great props. My favourite was that 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 dog and, and also. Um, oh God! They, they, there was so many. The, the, the glove was good as well. The glove. Was, oh, the, gl the gauntlets. Yeah. Um, was amazing. Um, God, there was so many cracking stuff. Um, the sex gas, obviously. Um, uh, oh, yeah, there was so many good. The glove I liked, that coming back to life was amazing. I mean, it rocked. It, when, it, when it was good, it was good, man. Well, we have time for a few more quick fire questions. So, out of our TARDIS, if you want to pull the questions out. For it. Okay. What have you got? Two tins of beans, <laughs> packet of kitchen towels. So. <laughs> we got a shopping list. Shop, yeah. <laughs> Do you prefer losing an arm or losing a leg? I love the way they phrase this. Do you prefer, like I've, it's already happened to me? Um, oh, would I prefer to lose an arm or lose a leg? I wouldn't like to lose either, to be honest with you. I, I rely on both quite heavily. Thinking about it, definitely the leg. Mm -hmm. Good God. I have no idea who this man is. Uh, that says Harry Potter. <laughs> Naoko. Which Harry Potter house would you be in? Would you be in? I've never heard of Harry Potter. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say Ravenclaw. How about you, Gareth? Slytherin. There's a few Slytherins out there, it sounds like. Yeah, next one. What's it like to kiss John Bar oh, 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 this is a good one. Gay before I met him. <laughs> oh, Lord of, the, Lord, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings or Hunger Games. Lord of the Rings for me, just because of, you know. I'm going to go Hunger Games. It actually. depends if you're talking about the books or the films. I think the films is a difficult one, but the books, definitely Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Hunger Games just because of uh, Jennifer Lawrence, I think. <laughs> Ooh. Um, did, that no did I make that noise involuntarily again? Sorry. Uh, Ooh. 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 Okay. Um, <laughs> do you prefer... Pardon? He's not getting out. 
I don't know what. I don't John know. Barrowman's not here now. Save it for later. All oh, right. Okay. So right. Okay. Cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Do you prefer? That's easy. Halloween or Christmas? Halloween every time. Kai. Um. Yeah, Halloween. I like Halloween as well. Oh, these are good. Oh, I like this. Do you prefer doing a seance or being hypnotized? Seance every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think seance as well, because you, you can remember what happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your TV guilty pleasure? Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's quite a good one. I, 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 at the moment, at the moment, it's 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 the game. It's Game of Thrones at the moment. It, I mean, it's start, I mean, I, I'm going to get beaten up before I leave here. Um, but it didn't feel so much like a guilty pleasure at first because it felt to me in the first two series before they had the money for the battles and you know and, and everything like that when it was all just very quite talky. You, you sort of you got rewarded because it made you work harder. I, li- I like TV that makes you sort of. Um, invest in it and work hard, like mm-hmm. and put put pieces together, yeah. S- like Twin Peaks at the moment. I'm finding that extremely re- rewarding because the whole thing is like a, a big puzzle. Then it, re- it requires you to work to put it together. And I found, I, I found um, Game of Thrones a, a bit like that at first, in the sense that it didn't lay everything on a plate for you. It wasn't obvious about everything. But I, I feel now watching now, and probably because it's got such a, 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 br- a broader audience, um, because so many people are watching it. They've it feels like they've dumbed it down slightly, made it easier, made it sort of, um, and I feel less involved when I'm watching it. I feel like I have to work less. I don't, and, it, and don't get me wrong, the, the storylines and the battle scenes and everything are, are, are amazing, but I, I think it's, it's more like a popcorn, it's like a guilty pleasure now, I have to watch it because I, I, I need to know what happens next, rather than oh, I need to watch this because um, I'm going to get involved with it personally. Do you know what I mean? Wow, that was... In- Interesting answer. Yeah. Not so quick fire. I, I, yeah, I, I just I just use that question as a piggyback <laughs> to, to give my it. thoughts about Game of Thrones. Sorry. <laughs> and Kai, last question. My guilty pleasure is Hollyoaks, by the way. <laughs> what is your sick day movie? Cool, good question. We can put those back in. Sorry. Good question. I've got loads. I mean, there is loads. Um, Pick one each. It has, to, it, has well, be, it, it has to be when there's lots of. There has to be something like a like a, a James Bond marathon or a right. Lord of the Rings marathon or Star Wars marathon. It has to, it's something like something um, something epic, long, or something you just sit there and just let it happen to you. I'm gonna say something like Uncle Buck uh-huh. or Coming to America. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Fantastic. It's good Brilliant. Well, thank you so much, guys, for talking to us. It's been absolutely excellent to have you here. Everyone give a warm round of applause to Kai and Gareth. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thank everybody. Uh, thanks for coming today, and thanks for your support. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. And uh, uh, if you're here tomorrow, I will be um, performing tracks from a new album. So uh, please feel free to come along. Um, and uh, listen to that. Um, I'm also doing a show tonight. <laughs> in my hotel room. Yeah, I'm in, uh, Cold. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the Premier Inn room 24601. Um, and bring the whiskey. So uh, the entrance fee is just like, just look at the Judd And then... Um, And 5,000 other covered in piss. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much.